Hello and welcome to a very new and exciting episode of your number one legal talk show, The Courthouse. And we've been talking about quite interesting topics that affect human beings generally, things that affect you and I. And we talked about waste management, sustainable development and things like that. But this time around, we want to look at workers. How are their disputes uh, resolved? How are things related to workers' disputes litigations relating to workers, employers, employees, how are they adjudicated upon? I am Ito Hand Oluma Agodo, but first we'll go on a quick break. We'll be right back. You're welcome back if you just joined us. This is the courthouse and this week we are talking about the National Industrial Court of Nigeria and I have a distinguished legal practitioner who is going to be telling us what that court is all about, what it stands for and he is none other than Solomon Ezeke. You are welcome to the courthouse. Thank you, Itohan. It's nice to be here once again. Okay, it's been a while so it's really good to see you. Thank you. All right, so the National Industrial Court, tell us about that court. The National Industrial Court of Nigeria is a specialized court created to specifically deal with disputes and issues emanating from employment, labor relations, industrial relations, workplace condition, anything that has to do with labor. And once there's a dispute arising in the course of that relationship, the only court in Nigeria that you can approach mm. to determine and resolve those issues is the, the National, National Industrial, Industrial Court of Nigeria. Oh, that's quite interesting. So are you saying by this um, explanation now that I cannot take um, a labor dispute to the high court, any high court in Nigeria? Not at all. Why? You cannot take a labor dispute, an employment-related dispute to any high court in Nigeria. Because courts are creatures of, of, of the law. Mm. And in Nigeria, the principal legislation that donated powers and jurisdiction to the court is the constitution. Mm. And um, I should give, give a bit background here. Okay. Uh, this situation has not always been so. The National Industrial Court has been embroiled in a lot of uncertainties over the years. 2010 because initially the National Industrial Court was not a court of record. Mm -hmm. It was not mentioned in or referred to in the Constitution of the Federal Republic okay, of so Nigeria. I was going to ask what a court of record is just for record purposes. <laughs> what is a court okay, uh, of record? There are categories of courts in Nigeria okay. and uh, in the Constitution there are courts that, specific, that were specifically set out there. And these are the High Court of Estate, the Sharia Court of Appeal, the Customary Court of Appeal, the, the Court of High Appeal, court. the Federal High Court, and the, the, the Supreme Court. Okay. Any other court that is not mentioned in the Constitution is not regarded as a court of record. Okay, so the, the National Industrial Court was not mentioned initially? In initially the in the Constitution. Okay. And so, what regulated, or uh, the only piece of legislation that dealt with National Industrial was Industrial Court was the National Industrial Court Act of 2006 yeah. and also the Trade Dispute Act. But there is no power in the Constitution that said, as at that time, that it is only the National Industrial Court that could determine matters arising from labor. So there, was, there were a lot of confusion. So what do we have? You had people approaching the High Court. You had others going straight to the National Industrial Court. You had the Court of Appeal giving conflicting decisions. Some said the National Industrial Court has exclusive jurisdiction. Mm. Others said no, the Constitution has not donated that power to the National Industrial Court. So this affair continued till 2010 when the Constitution was amended by the third alteration okay. to specifically recognize the National Industrial Court in the Constitution and to give it exclusive jurisdiction over labor and employment related matters. So that's um, in section six, uh, it, it, another section, another sub uh, section was added to mention the National Industrial Court. Yes, several sections. Okay. Section 254. 254. Section 
343, they are all mentioned. They were all amended to, in to include, include and accommodate the National Industrial, industrial, industrial Court. Court. That's quite interesting. So now you talked about the fact that the National Industrial Court actually adjudicates on labor cases. But by labor cases, what do we mean? Is, is it that um, I have to be out of employment of a particular organization before I can bring a labor-related matter can I, before I can go to the National Industrial Court? Must I be dismissed first or what type of cases generally? The Constitution and the case laws do not say you must have left employment mm. to take any dispute arising. The word is any dispute. Once there's a dispute, whether you're still in employment or not, and you feel aggrieved and you feel there's a need for that dispute to be resolved, you have a right, whether or not you are still in employment, to challenge that issue at the National Industrial Court. Mm, quite interesting. So give us some more examples of cases that I can bring. Maybe um, because now that you said I don't have to have left the employment of that person, it's quite interesting because if I actually take uh, <laughs> my employers to court, do you think the National Industrial Court will have enough protection for me after the, the dispute has been resolved, after the matter has come to an end in court? Do you think I'll still be allowed to work in that organization? Well, um, uh, this issue is not strictly an issue of law. What you just, this scenario you just <laughs> painted now. Of course, <laughs> you have a right to approach the court okay. for a dispute to be resolved. Assuming you are in employment, for instance, and uh, your salary is X, Y, Z, but consistently you are being paid something less, you have an option <laughs> to go to the, court of appeal, to, to the National Industrial, Industrial Court. Court to ask the court to look into this matter, ask my employer to pay me my full salary. Wow. Of course, there are also other inherent risk. <laughs> the employer might, yes, mm -hmm. the employer might feel aggrieved. Okay. You drag him to court and might want to terminate the employment, but he must still do so in accordance with the contract of employment or any applicable law okay. to that employment in question. Very, very interesting. I, I, I don't want to comment further because <laughs> I'm going to court, to the National Industrial Court, to fight for my salary to be paid or for the increase of my salary to be affected. But after that, after I get judgments in that regard, I may not have any job to come back to. Exactly. Okay. So let's leave that there. So now, um, under the uh, National Industrial Courts, we, we always hear about uh, alternative dispute resolution and things like that. And we heard that there's a, a, an alternative dispute resolution center integral to the National Industrial Courts. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yes, the, like, uh, the National Industrial Courts M and the purpose, the jurisprudence behind it is to see to the effectual and the efficient resolution of disputes. The labor sector is vital to any economy. That's why in the first, that was why in the first place it was deemed expedient to create such a court. And one of the mandates of the court, one of the objectives of the court is to ensure that this, these disputes, when they arise, are resolved in an amicable way as possible to maintain labor relations. So you find out that the National Industrial Court is leaning towards a, a, an amicable resolution of disputes. That's why you have in the rules special provision relating to alternative dispute resolutions. Okay. The rules of the National Industrial Court 2017 encourages the parties and the judges are mandated to ensure that the parties explore alternative dispute resolution mechanism. Okay. And so that these issues are resolved with a, a lit, as little, uh, um, I'm looking for the appropriate word here, just to maintain labor relations. Okay. To ensure that these matters are resolved amicably. Amicably and speedily too. And speedily too. Okay, quite interesting. Well, uh, we've been talking to Solomon Ezeke and he's been telling us about the National Industrial Court of Nigeria, a specialized court that is um, basically 
empowered to uh, adjudicate on trade disputes, anything related to labor, that is the court to go to. But we have a report on the National Industrial Court and we have some legal nuggets for you. We'll be right back. The National Industrial Court of Nigeria is a specialized superior court of record dispensing social justice in terms of labor-related matters in accordance with the rule of law and by fostering public trust, understanding, and confidence it has the Alternative Dispute Resolution Center to resolve certain disputes arising from labor, employment, industrial relations, workplace issues, and the like between parties using processes of mediation and conciliation. The center uses mediation and consolation techniques to assist parties resolve their disputes and arrive at mutually acceptable agreements in less costly, speedy and efficient manner. There are those of us who live in the unlimited power of the Spirit. Those of us who love to experience the Spirit without measure and manifest His wisdom and power in our world every day. We know that though we walk the face of this earth, we are not of this world and our citizenship is in heaven. We love to experience His Word in new dimensions, walking in a continuous stream of the miraculous and staying connected to the move of His Spirit no matter where we go. To us, the glory of this later house far exceeds that of the Take family. It! Take it! Take it! That's the power of the Holy Ghost. We know that the ministry of the Holy Spirit on earth today is greater than what we saw with the apostles and prophets of old. If you are one of us and you want to know this great personality called the Holy Spirit, experience the power of His Word beyond the written pages and explore what He is doing in our day, we invite you to take a ride with us. The vehicle already exists. It's just a tap away. Watch the Love World Networks on the Live TV mobile app. Welcome to a whole new world of the supernatural. You're welcome back if you just joined us. This is the courthouse and we've been talking to Solomon Ezeke who's been talking about the National Industrial Court and he just ended by saying that the uh, alternative dispute resolution is always encouraged to maintain good relations and uh, for also for disputes to be settled speedily. I hope if ADR is um, actually used then I can retain my job if I take my employer to the NIC. Well, let me ask now, in ADR, the only terms of settlement, what happens to those terms of settlement? Is there anybody that is um, sent by the National Industrial Court to oversee the terms of settlement to ensure that the agreement is actually implemented? What, what the uh, National Industrial Court will do, where parties have resorted to an alternative dispute resolution mechanism to settle their dispute. In most cases, people drop terms of settlement, and parties are required to apply to the National Industrial Court to adopt these terms of settlement as judgment of okay. the National Industrial Court. 
Once it's adopted and entered as the judgment of the National Industrial Court, it has binding effect. Okay. And uh, any party that does not comply, options are available to the other party to execute the judgment against such a party. Oh, so the National Industrial Court strictly does not have a mechanism of monitoring to ensure that people abide by these terms okay. or judgments. There are options available to a party to ensure that the judgment he obtains in his favor, that he reaps the proof fruit of it. Okay, that's quite interesting. But now, in, in terms of um, injuries, um, a lot of um, in injuries, then pensions, things that workers day to day, they always have issues with things like that. Is it that there's no, they are not aware that there's a national industrial court or the national industrial court is not interested in matters relating to pension because a lot of times you see some workers, retired workers on the streets queuing up, staying in long queues for days waiting for um, their pension or one entitlement or the other. What, what can you tell us about this? The national industrial court has powers when it relates to pensions because the pension is deducted and remitted in the course of your employment. Okay. So it's a matter connected. Specifically, the Constitution says that the National Industrial Court has powers to look into such matters. Of course, most times people might not resort to the court to ensure that these rights are being uh, upheld. Uh, sometimes it might be due to ignorance. They might not know. Some know, but they think that the cost of pursuing this line of action is heavy. Mm. Some just don't want to have the, the, some just don't have the uh, will to pursue these matters in court. So they resort to playing to the emotions of relevant authorities mm. to that's please pay them their, what is due that, to them. That, that's quite... Um, Sad because also you see some workers injured, they lose their limbs, lose their arms, or things like that, and they can't get another employment. Tell us a bit what, what should be done. Is there any remedy for them under the law? And if there's any remedy, what laws, how do they um, actually get access to such remedies? There are laws that protect uh, employees in the course of discharging their duties. There are laws that provide for compensation in, in, in case of injuries, injuries, even in case of deaths. And the National Industrial Court, like I said, has the power to determine these issues and award compensation as it determines fit, as it deems fit. But like I said, most people do not know or they are scared of the cost of pursuing this remedy. So there's option, there's solution, there's remedy. The law is that way there is injury. There's always a remedy. There's always a remedy. Okay, before we close this discussion, can you give us some uh, reforms you would like to see in the National Industrial Court? Um, or how well, or, or can you talk in terms of letting people know more about the Industrial Court? Just some few thoughts. Well, the, what the government needs to do is to sensitize people about the existence the powers and functions of the National Industrial Court. Also, human rights groups can also take up that job. Most times you see that these human rights groups have lots of persons looking up to them to fight for them. They should also sensitize them and tell them there's opportunity for you to get remedy in courts. And some of them should also be willing to render pro bono services and see that these matters are taken to court and determined in their favor. Talking of reforms, again, uh, the National Industrial Court is known to be efficient and effective. Those some have criticized that is employee interested. Mm. So they most times seem to lean in favor of the employee. Uh, that is neither here or there. That is argument there. I have no opinion on it. Um, but there was an issue that lingered for a while until it was settled in 2017 as to powers of appeal from decisions of the National Industrial Court to the Court of Appeal. Okay. And most people, when the situation was not clear, when the position was not clear, 
didn't have much faith in national industrial courts because they felt if my issue can just be resolved by one man and that becomes final, how am I sure that I will get justice? Why don't give, do you give me opportunity to go up there to test whatever judgment I get? Oh, okay. So and by this you're saying that there was no right to appeal after the industrial Not really. Oh, okay. Let me explain. Okay. Like I say, the jurisdiction and powers of court are donated by statutes. Yes. When the constitution was amended, the constitution specifically says that there will be right of appeal from the decisions of national industrial courts in matters relating to fundamental human rights okay. and criminal decisions. So where the national industrial courts in exercising the jurisdiction comes to a judgment emanating from fundamental human rights or criminal in nature, you have a right of appeal to go to the court of appeal to challenge that judgment or decision. Now, that same amendment had an interesting provision. And he said in relation to every other decision for the National Industrial Court, an appeal shall lie only as prescribed by an act of National Assembly. Oh. Now, <laughs> the twist is this. There was or there is no other act of, of the, the National, National Assembly, Assembly prescribing a right, right of, of appeal, appeal in decisions of National Industrial Court other than fundamental rights and criminal, criminal matters. matters. So some people since we are like, if all they will get is a one man looking at me and decide, and I can't go on to test what he said, why am I wasting time? So the con this situation continued, and to worsen it, we had the Court of Appeal also giving conflicting judgments. Oh. Some said, no, you can appeal, but we leave. Some said, no, you cannot appeal because it's not provided when it's not on fundamental rights and criminal decision. But in 2017, the Supreme Court settled it. And Supreme Court said, there is nothing in the Constitution that says that the National Industrial Court will be a final court in relation to its decisions. And the Supreme Court provide, proceeded to say that you can appeal against every decision of the National, National Industrial, Industrial Court. Court. However, when it is not on fundamental rights or criminal issues, you need the leave of the Court of Appeal. Okay, I don't want to go into asking you the jurisprudence of that because that seems to have left the matter as it is in a way. Because I would ask to ask for leave of the court of uh, the National Industrial Court before going on appeal. That's quite interesting. So any, <laughs> that's what you want to see reforms for. Yes. Because I think there should be a very, a, very, very clear statement on that. There should be a right of appeal without necessarily seeking, seeking for leave. Seeking for leave. And for your information, seeking for leave is seeking for permission. That's seeking for leave of court is seeking for, for permission, permission to appeal. Court. Permission Basically, to you're begging the court to allow you to go to and appeal. To appeal. So, there you have it. Whenever you hear leave of court, it's permission of the court. So, thank you so much, Solomon S.E.K.
that's the much we can thank this week on the courthouse but before we leave i want to say a very big thank you to solomon ezike for making out time to be with us this week on the courthouse thank you Ito. it's been my pleasure to be okay. here thank you so much so we want your questions to keep coming in we want your quest your comments to keep coming in and we would like you to go to our website on www.loverplus.tv and to also download our app lover plus on any of the mobile app stores we have numbers that we're showing on your screen now that you can send your comments or your questions to i am itohan oloma godo and i say don't just get mad go get a lawyer bye for now thank you so so much